wastewater. It's what gets flushed down the toilet, rinsed down the drain, and produced by places such as factories, workplaces, and homes. According to the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, the average person uses about 100 gallons of water a day, with almost all of it turning into some form of wastewater. Of the 100 gallons per capita per day of wastewater we produce, we are drinking about a gallon per day per capita. Essentially, wastewater is the one gallon of human waste produced per capita per day, diluted with 99 gallons of non-human waste. Because wastewater contains pollutants and contaminants, most communities send it to treatment plants to be processed. The water has to meet federal, state, and local standards before it's released back into the environment. Wastewater is one part of the human water cycle, which describes the many ways people interact with nature's hydrologic cycle to meet our needs for water, food, and energy. While water treatment plants are a necessary part of public health and environmental safety, they require a great deal of energy and resources to operate. In the U.S., we, we devote about 3 to 6 percent of the national energy budget on the enterprise of clean water. Kartik Chandran is a professor of earth and environmental engineering at Columbia University and funded by the National Science Foundation. He investigates new, more efficient ways to treat wastewater. Wastewater contains elements such as phosphorus, organic carbon, and nitrogen, which are often removed during the treatment process. Well, let's start with nitrogen. When we want to remove nitrogen from wastewater, in addition to the organic carbon, the energy footprint of a wastewater treatment plant essentially doubles. At the Newtown Wastewater Treatment Plant in Brooklyn, New York, treating wastewater involves several steps. First, the system separates floating matter and solids from the water. The remaining sewage then enters an aeration tank. What we do in aeration tanks is we supply oxygen to microorganisms that actually treat the sewage. Typical microbes for wastewater treatment require oxygen to degrade organic pollutants. The resulting sludge is further treated and in its final step, the water is disinfected. Chandran is trying to reduce the amount of energy used in this process. He uses a type of bacteria found in wastewater called Animox. These organisms don't need oxygen to remove nitrogen from wastewater. While traditional wastewater treatment often releases greenhouse gases such as nitrous oxide and carbon dioxide, using Animox bacteria does not. They allow us to remove nitrogen at far lower energy uh, costs and uh, chemical costs. Not just that, we would save 60% in terms of aeration costs if we, if we use the Animox model for removing nitrogen. Chandran and his team are also looking at ways to use wastewater's abundant chemicals, nutrients and other resources to produce energy. We have been able to convert the organic carbon in food waste, in sewage sludge, in fecal sludge, to biodiesel which is a liquid fuel easily transported and easily used, directly used in, uh, in, in diesel engines. The Newtown Wastewater Treatment Plant is already producing energy from organic material. The digesters are heated to about 95 degrees Fahrenheit. They, they act like the human body. They break down the organic material and we provide no oxygen. And one of the byproducts of the digestion process is methane gas. Methane gas is a common energy source. We are right now using a good portion of our digester gas to heat our boilers in our locations. The boilers are used for the, you know, heating the environmental areas, the personnel areas, and they're also used to reheat the digesters. Chandran and his team are also finding additional uses for wastewater products. For example, they are using the organic carbon found in wastewater to develop bioplastics and taking the phosphorus and nitrogen from wastewater for use in irrigation. By linking the water sector, the energy sector, the food sector, and a few other sectors, we are now able to address these challenges not just one by one individually in isolation, but together in conjunction. That's a very sustainable model. As Chandran and his team help make the human water cycle more energy efficient, they are also helping us see wastewater not as waste, but as a precious resource.